Es vairs neatminu, kā sauc to skolotāju. I don't remember what was the name of the teacher. Laikā, kad es mācījos vidus skolā. When I was learning at the secondary school. Bet kad kāds atnāca uz nodarbību. So when somebody came for classes. Uz nodarbību. To the class. Nebija gatavs. And was not prepared. Hadn't done homework. Hadn't learned something. That had to be learned. And the teacher always said. Ko tu esi atnācis tā kā uz baznīcu? Why have you come like to the church? Nu, kāds nāk uz baznīcu cilvēks? So, what do they pretend? How people come to church? Nothing, just wearing trousers. Uzvilts viņš ir kaut ko ir. Wearing something. And that's it. That's all you need to be able to go to the church. Kurš šorīt ir atnācis? Who has come to church today? Ir dažas rokas. Yeah, I can see some hands. Jā. Nu, tā tad... But my word this morning, and I really believe that the Holy Spirit spoke to me during this week. And then, coming to the end of the week, I kind of started slowing down, and I was thinking, Lord, may I say all this to my people? And then I was calmed down by the scripture from 2 Timothy 3.16. There is 1 John 3.16, John 3.16, and this is 2 Timothy 3.16. And what's written there? So this scripture encouraged me. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. No. So, upbringing, you usually think about your childhood, when mother or father. So, who was the more teaching you in your family? Mother or father? Who was doing more this teaching job? Yeah, yeah. No. Ko, Olit, pirmā rindā? Olit, es ēz mother. Nu, abiem var cegot... Of course, it's been different in different families, and I must say that if in our family where David was grown up, was growing up, who from the parents was more doing these educative activities and educated more? It was her. I wouldn't say who of us, but it was her. Is it pleasant that somebody is kind of teaching us something? Is it needed? Would we need to be corrected and reproved? Some time ago, I was talking to someone who had made a mistake in their life, uh, quite a serious mistake, and then I was asking, so next to you, you had a very mature and experienced Christian. Didn't they clearly stand against you and didn't they tell you that uh, doing like that is wrong? And this person said, they didn't. But uh, maybe they should have done it. I should have liked somebody to tell it. You know, sometimes God is sending us uh, into the life of somebody so that we can clearly tell them without all these uh, uh, different types how we try to uh, cover this truth so that it's hard to understand. Sometimes my spouse is asking, what did you want to tell with this sermon? And I was thinking, if even my wife didn't understand. Thank you. So the idea is that even if my wife didn't understand, so what about all the rest of the people who were looking at me, kind of they understood. So you want somehow to cover and so make this truth so beautiful with such roses and flowers. So that there is the feeling that this is so lovely and so acceptable and people even don't hear it. But see what's written here. Not only for reproof, reproof for correction. So the word of God is not only to calm you down. Don't worry, for example. 
All this doesn't matter. Your sins. <coughs> ah, it's nothing. All your mistakes. Say it's nothing. What's the most important? What is the most important? Shouldn't you correct your mistakes? So, let us see. It's written that the word of God is given to us so that it uh, teaches us and reproves us and corrects us so that the man of God, verse uh, 17, the man of God may be complete and um, equipped uh, for every good work. So, the fact that I came here and the other pastor, and we have several gifts of ministry in our church, and thanks God that we are very different, we see things differently, we present them in different way, and this is because God has given to us various gifts of uh, ministry, but if somebody comes here and ministers, it's not for you uh, just to put a new idea in your boxes of brain, oh, uh, like some new thought, yeah, it's uh, possible, so this way and so on. No, it's not for that, it's for you to change something in your life, so that you as a person and your activities does uh, change. So those who uh, knew you yesterday, they meet you today and they say, something has changed in you. So is it normal that if you are a Christian for 10 years, 10 years, ministering 10 years and following Jesus for 10 years, and you are even more irritable, even more nervous. Uh, you remember all these bad things that happened. Uh, you are insulted so easily. And uh, if somebody steps on your feet, uh, you kill them, maybe not with your hands, but uh, with your words. Is it normal? No, of Dios course it's not normal. God wants and He has given His word for you and me uh, to listen and to change, to become other people, so that it is pleasant for others to be with us, safer for others to be with us, so that those who are next to us feel more respected, more appreciated, more loved. And I believe that also this morning, uh, what I want to share with with you is this invitation and it is as exactly like that and this mission of the world is to change something in your life so we are not adjusting God to our lifestyle to our comfort as we want to our appetites but we are changing ourselves God is never going to change as much as you wouldn't uh, believe, uh, wouldn't justify it with some kind of extracts and scriptures, God is not going to change. You need to change. And I have an illustration which in this case uh, very well illustrates the main, main idea I would like to express. And this time, this is... Uh, about a uh, large company and there is uh, uh, they need to employ to hire a new employee and a student who is uh, almost uh, has finished uh, the university and gotten uh, the diploma of engineer and he is looking for a new job and so this uh, new engineer has come to the interview and the interviewer is, is asking him so what is the first job you're looking for and in the new engineer mm, becomes very serious and is saying two and a half thousand uh, per month maybe a little bit less but uh, there should be also very serious bonuses and the interviewer is saying what would you say about bonuses five weeks vacation in summer uh, plus uh, 15 uh, holidays uh, during Christmas and also half of your salary is uh, also uh, transferred to your pension third level so this is transferred to your third level of pension and full insurance health insurance plus dentist services and of course also so a work uh, car, uh, something, something uh, simple, uh, practical, Corvette, for example. And this engineer kind of uh, 
stands up and thinks, and he's saying, you're joking? And the interviewer says, but you started. So what was so wrong in all this? That this interviewer uh, found uh, funny, like a joke. And I believe that uh, what was wrong is that this new employee, this engineer to be, he wasn't uh, worried and uh, concerned what kind of contribution he can give, what he will be adequate, uh, what he will bring to this company, the company which already functions without him. His only care was, concern was about uh, the thing which uh, is actually responsible from of the other side so what can I take from you and instead of what can I give to you and so for the um, interviewer that seemed funny more than 30 years ago I understood that God spoke to me that I would become a pastor in Pekvest before me there was a senior pastor he was experienced he had studied he was a pastor in Baptist church and God spoke to me in my dream that I would become a pastor of Pekvest so it happened more than 30 years ago I don't remember exactly but about that and my question and uh, my internal insecurity and fear and tension was, uh, oh my God, what kind of pastor I'm going to be, how I will be able to fulfill what I have to do, how I will be able to step on the platform and to be able to... I receive something from God. In my understanding, and maybe I had old-fashioned understanding, and I still have it, I think that pastor is not somebody who just looks in his notes and decides, okay, I'll put, take this to, from this and this from that and make a good speech. Uh, I believe that the pastor has to be a person who has to go to God, and then God says, this is what you uh, will tell, and I, I want you to tell this and that. And, and then the pastor goes to his people and says that uh, God said that he wants to, to you, uh, me to speak this and that to you. And first months uh, in my pastor's career were like a nightmare. And uh, some time ago I was uh, telling about some sentimental memories, how I didn't sleep nights, how I was drinking coffee at nights to be able to hear something from God. Because I thought at the moment when I would be ordained as a pastor, I would kneel and God would start whispering in my ear. He would speak to me and we, will, we would have special relationships I will, would go to heaven during the week and then on Sunday I would be able to tell how everything is in, organized in heaven. But nothing like that happened. And then I remember the story about a pastor who said that uh, he was all the week, he was having fun and, that, um, and believing that uh, on Sunday morning God would do ev give everything for him. There is a scripture in the Bible that uh, it's... Uh, in vain that you are uh, struggling and doing and worrying, uh, God uh, does everything during sleep. And there are some Christians who believe that uh, real Christians don't need to work hard because God uh, gives them everything during sleep. And we like this doctrine, right? And so this pastor comes uh, on Sunday morning and steps on the platform and asks the Holy Spirit, what do you want uh, to speak to my people? And the Holy Spirit was whispering into his ear, you're lazy bone, lazy bone, lazy, lazy, lazy man. And he went uh, down and understood that uh, he can't preach this. But you know why I am telling all this? Because I had no doubt that God can pay back. In my understanding, I had more faith that God would pay back, that He is not exploiting me, that He is not uh, taking someone, uh, taking away from them everything and then spit them out uh, in middle age. Uh, 
Dievs that I don't nā. need you anymore, you're too old. God is not like that. Vairāk vajadzīgi ticība par to, ka Dievs spēj lietot man, ka es spēju būt tas, ka man ir jābūt. Dievs, ka es kā tavs darbinies, varēšu attaisnot tās cerības, kur tu esi uz mani līdzus, kurā no cerības, kas uz mani ir līdz no cilvēku puses. Dievs, es gribu būt labs, bet man nav drosmes, ka man tas ir ļoti 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 totally different. Es I would say, I want to understand what is this job. I would like to understand what the, the engineer has to do. I remember how in our medical school those uh, graduates, when they got uh, to real hospitals, to real internships and also ER, teams and uh, when I graduated from this uh, fourth medical school and I saw my classmates uh, uh, that uh, that was the moment when they started the real training because uh, we had some skills from school we were able to do some things but in reality to be in this stress situation to see that the person is dying and to put together all you had learned uh, you needed to learn it and uh, the students uh, had to understand that the best they can get from first job is to learn to become an engineer a real engineer and I know of course I'm not an entrepreneurship and I don't know how it works but also in my uh, supervision there are people and if I see that somebody is really devoted to work I have a big dilemma in my heart uh, how would they live with this money and I'm hoping that they that we would be able to pay them so that they can live a normal life and uh, it's even more for employees when they employ somebody um, and they see that the person is really diligently working and I'm talking about a real person, about a real employee who understands that in order to be able to receive something you have to um, sacrifice something to, to give something and this entrepreneur is taking care that uh, this uh, employee is well paid and I am sure that God is uh, the same. I have heard pastors who um, set some requirements for God in the beginning. If you take care of me, my family, if my family is well fed, if I have this and this car and this and this apartment, then I would serve you. I didn't know that it's possible to do like that. I don't know whether it works. But uh, in my case, it really works. For several tens of years, the salary we received in church, um, and in the beginning we were able to pay only half of our expenses, and I'm not saying that we were living a luxury life. We were living from uh, one sausage and some uh, very, very simple, uh, some very simple things, and very often, I'm not going to tell all the details on all these stories, but very often the salary, I will tell how it was, the salary we received at church, uh, we were able to live for half a month, just uh, the most minimum of uh, all the expenses. And the rest, the uh, second half of the month, we needed uh, to receive as a miracle. And we have told uh, for several times, and also League has told about several times, that, for example, um, Christmas night, we go home after uh, service and everybody is happy, but we have nothing at home. Uh, of course, it doesn't mean that we don't have potatoes or something like that. Uh, we have had them, but uh, nothing special. And then one sister, sometimes one brother or some other situation solves all this disadvantage. And in this sense, I would like to say that God is a God who is not using people, who is not uh, exploiting people. His, um, you can trust uh, his ability to pay, his uh, wish and uh, desire to pay much more than then uh, uh, how much more than you have invested in his work. So is it correct uh, to trust God knowing that God would pay back and would remunerate and not that you take care that God please uh, pay to me and uh, uh, God I hold on to your word that you would uh, take care of me.
And there are several scriptures in the Bible about that. I will not speak about all of them, but I would like to show some. So, for example, Romans uh, um, 12, 19. Beloved, do not revenge yourselves, but rather give peace to wrath. So, um, God's wrath, because it's written, vengeance is mine. So, for Christians, this vengeance, uh, retaliation, has to be taken out of our life. Yes, we have situations in life that somebody does something wrong to us, still um, some speak some bad things about ourselves. And even more painful, if it's uh, somebody who is so sweet uh, when you are with him, and then you hear that behind your back they are talking so bad things about you. And during my servant's life, um, minister's life I've had it for several times. I kind of feel that there are people with whom I have very, very good and warm relationships. And, uh, and I think that those people are so nice and, and I especially think um, so that I accidentally don't uh, miss and pass those people and I would like to show that they are especially um, um, close to me. And those are the people who behind my back uh, actually uh, showed uh, and uh, talked so bad things about me and also uh, despised me. And then um, you think, how is it possible? How is it possible? There are people whom I have missed past I, I don't have time and I cannot stop at them and they speak good things but this person for, for, I never passed him I always uh, told him how important they are how happy I am to see them how much they mean for us um, they have special um, place in my heart and behind my back they were uh, talking so bad things and I was thinking it's wrong God you cannot leave it like that and then always uh, I have this scripture which says Vilnius this is not your business I will deal with it so if we start doing those things this is a sign that we don't have enough faith, that we don't trust that God, that God is able to do it. But God said He would do it, that he, it is His part. But here we are not only talking about retaliation and vengeance, but uh, God says that I will pay back, I will um, do it. And this is also po positively thinking that I would pay, I would uh, take care of those who take care of uh, you. Yeah, they are in safe hands. Or maybe this scripture is not enough for you. There is another revelation, 20 to 12. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to their words. So I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. We know uh, for Abraham, God said, Abraham. I am your reward, and your riches are enormous. Hebrews 11.6, it's written that the one who turns to God has to believe that he exists and that he pays back to those who uh, search him. He is not God uh, who is uh, stone and went away somewhere. He is God who communicates and uh, you cannot uh, somehow be better than God in giving. So, um, why I was telling this story about the student? I believe that there is uh, one very significant uh, tendency in the Christian world, and, and, and also, uh, if you go to the Western world, you can see it, and with uh, terror you can see it. And what is it? Galatians uh, 6. We can read uh, very interesting words. Do not be deceived. Okay, I'll make a step back. I believe that uh, we are very busy with uh, counting how much God has to pay back, has to pay back to us. Remember, we say that the ear and eye haven't seen how uh, God has prepared for us, so we will enjoy His love, He will give to us, He will care, uh, we are heirs, and so on and so forth. But instead, 
of uh, being busy with thoughts what I can bring to God. We think only what He can give to us. So, do these words that you can give, do they inspire you? Does it show in your activity, in your works? Not only these parole, parole, just words and words. I can explain everything, I can say everything, but in my life you don't see anything. God wants so that my deep love and my devotion to Christ can be seen in my works and in my activities. And this is something we need to do. And we have to be busy with that. And so Galatians 6, verse 7, Do not be deceived. So don't lie to yourself. Um, because I will explain how it works, Paul says. God is not mocked for whatever man sows, that he will also reap. Do not be deceived. Christians, aren't uh, we deceiving ourselves? We are just thinking about if those two hours which I sit in the service, this is such a sacrifice. Oh my God, what God, how he will reward me, how he would pay to me. Uh, he is already building a house, uh, already for 2,000 years he is building my apartment and my house. And when he would finish, when I would be 98, he would take me back over there and I will live there and um, there will be angels would be singing and sweeping the streets angels will be working in McDonald's I will be walking around and this is gonna be heaven what the eye hasn't seen and um, uh, um, nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him so uh, it's gonna be even more even more so I'm so busy thinking how much God would pay for to me for these two hours I've spent in the um, house of God but, but uh, we really do not be deceived. God is not mocked. He is not fool. He is not someone. You go and you pretend that kind of uh, you are serving him. I am sorry that I am so talking so with so simple words. I don't want uh, this, but I just uh, want to emphasize this idea that uh, haven't. Um, if you are a manager in the company, um, haven't you had an indifferent, uninterested, unqualified, lazy employees? Have you? And what do you do when you meet such people who are using every possible opportunity and they are professionals in pretending that they work, but in reality, basically, they are stealing, they are spending their working hours doing their own things, they are doing what they need, and afterwards, if there is some time left, they also work something for the company benefit. So what do you do with them? How do you deal with them? Them. And then you understand that it's very hard to deal with them because uh, they have answered all of your questions. You in need to hire uh, Sherlock Holmes to prove to them uh, that, uh, that they are not good employees, that they are stealing companies' time, companies' money, companies' working place, that basically they are existing on uh, behalf of others. And um, what to do if uh, such people are that uh, Christians are like that. I spoke that uh, some time ago in my youth, uh, among us guys, we had an idea that um, those who really believe in God, they don't need to work because God gives everything during sleep. And you open your eyes in the morning and you have everything and you just say, yeah, everything is agreed. Hallelujah. And uh, what can we do if Christians are like that? 
So unbelievers should work hard, yes. We would show them an example how Christians live. But do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever among uh, invests, they would also receive. As much as they invest, uh, they would receive back. And uh, what, uh, we also read that uh, he who sows to his flesh uh, will also reap uh, from flesh. And this is philosophy of flesh, uh, take as much as possible and give as little as possible. So which is the ideal workplace for schoolboys? This is a workplace you work from home. Nobody is uh, controlling you. You are so efficient. You write one email and you are paid for this three, 30 million. And workplace where you don't need to work a lot and uh, you are paid a lot and, uh, and they want to pay one bonus, another bonus and so on and you are sent uh, uh, to, for some vacations and business trips and you just need to go to this conference and receive um, the money and uh, ideal workplace, right? This is ideal faith, ideal religion, God that gives more than we can understand. And the one who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So what shall we do? What shall we do if we get what we invest and we are compensated for what we invested? God appreciates your investment, so let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart, so let us not grow weary. Let us not grow weary doing good, for in due season we shall reap. Let's not grow weary. What a man sows, they would reap. Do not uh, be deceived. And sometimes for Christians, uh, they seem that this is not a just scripture. It's spoken about save, uh, salvation, that those who live according to flesh are not saved. Well, Yes, I don't know how many times unbelievers read this scripture, and how many times those who go to hell really listen to what the Apostle Paul is saying, do not be deceived, God is not mocked. I believe it is um, pretty clear that we as Christians, as children of God, can live according to flesh, and this is the easiest, the most comfortable way, and uh, this is the ideal working place where you give as li little as possible from you and take as much as possible, and you are like, I don't know, there is a word which is uh, like you are trying to take as much as possible. And, and, and this is a person, as soon as they see that they can get something, they kind of become super active and I can take more, can take more. And some time ago, it was a couple of years ago, one of our uh, quite wealthy brothers came to me and said, Vilnius, I want to bless you. I want to, to give you a watch uh, as a present. I looked at this, this is not this watch. This is a different watch, and that was an expensive watch. Was, um, I don't remember, but uh, I believe that it was like a golden and, and very, very beautiful. And um, I also had this uh, uh, kind of uh, taker in myself. Glory to Jesus, I already have three watches at home, but thanks uh, to Jesus uh, that God spoke to you. Thank you, thank you, and I just took it, and I took it home, and the Holy Spirit was saying, Hey, Wilms, Wilms, do you really need it? Are you, have you really invested so much? And it was very hard for me to return back, uh, back to this brother and say, Dear brother, please understand me right. This is not because uh, this is too simple or this or that, because this watch uh, was and is uh, very, very uh, good. But the Holy Spirit uh, assured me that I have become greedy, that I just uh, need to get everything that I see. 
Uh, I cannot do this. I was grown up and I grew up in uh, poverty. And I believe that all of us uh, who are my age, we grew up in poverty. And it also uh, leaves some kind of imprint in our mentality, our thinking. And uh, we might think that everything that we can get, we have to take because now you never know that whether tomorrow we would get it or not. So it was really hard for me to return this gift and say that uh, this is intended for somebody else who has invested, for, for whom it would be the only watch and for him it would be like a, an answer, answer from heaven. For me, this is already a third clock, so a watch, I don't need it. And please take it back. And I believe that this brother gave it to somebody else. To somebody, and for somebody else it really worked and uh, they are still uh, praising God and looking at this watch and saying that this is a testimony that God takes care of me that and pays and rewards. But um, my uh, general idea is, do we, as God's uh, children, as his co-workers, as uh, individuals to whom uh, he has entrusted to the world and uh, other people, do we have the right attitude? God, I want to invest. Uh, God, I want to do as much as possible. Please help me. Please help me. Please help me, Please help me not to be a person who is counting all the time what you have not uh, returned to me. That and 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 be a uh Please help me not to be a person who don't take care of how much you uh, we invest. I also met a woman who understood she needs to encourage her husband, and she was saying like that. Listen to me, my dear, my dear husband. I am surprised that you would go to work and you would work all the day long and in the evening and at the end of the month you would bring this money home and you would feed your children you would feed me so that uh, there is a mother for your children and I am fascinated and shocked and I was thinking what God has found something uh, in me or in those children that uh, we, uh, we can live next to this great man. Is this what God hey, is going to say? Hey, you lived during peaceful times, during times when there were no slavery. You lived during times where you were able to eat what you want and you were able to buy as much as needed. You have full wardrobe with clothes and footwear. You have money in your account. You cannot decide where to go and where to eat. You lived in this uh, terrible time. And you sacrificed so much to me, and probably there would be accountant of Lambert's, uh, of our um, former city mayor, and they would be able to, in heaven, to calculate from your uh, offerings uh, the money that it's really one tenth of all it that you earned. Is it going to be like that? That uh, some kind of uh, that accountant would be there? No. God is not mocked. So I'm coming close to the conclusion. And um, um, I would like to summarize what I wanted to say. So in Matthew 6 we read, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So instead of mammon we can put money. You cannot serve God and money. We cannot serve God and money. In the Gospel of Matthew, it's written that Pharisees were mocking Jesus about those words. And it seems that what has it done? Um, what, uh, what's common between God and money? We serve to God when we have free time. We serve God when we have done everything and we have some free time. And then we serve God. But money money. But just think about it. I was thinking to myself, what people are prepared to do for the sake of money? 
for salary. What is it? So uh, I have a list, but you would add something to my list. So people are ready to get up early. Uh, go by public transport to the workplace through that they hate, to the team they don't like. And they are prepared to smile and be polite and cooperate with people whom uh, they basically don't uh, like. Because they know they count on that they will be paid for it. People go to war today because there is uh, there are people who are paid to go to Ukraine to kill other people and be prepared that they would be also shot at, uh, but they do it uh, for the sake that they receive salary. Maybe some days ago you have heard about an actor who, for the sake of his role, not a dream role, but uh, um, a role he would be paid for, he ate so much that he looked uh, so bad. And he was prepared to do this just to receive money. Others lose weight. Others uh, go on dangerous expeditions. People are not ashamed uh, uh, that uh, for the sake of money uh, some other people come with cameras in their bedroom and also bathroom. People commit crimes uh, because for money. People steal and uh, defraud others. They get uh, also positions with higher authority. Uh, they are ready to sell our, their nation for the sake of money. For the sake of money, because of money, it seems so understandable that you are doing something for money. But here he puts uh, and uh, on the same scales money and God. So what you are prepared to do for the sake of money and what do you do for the sake of God? What have you sacrificed for God? What? I don't know much about you. I don't uh, check or always um, look how much you offering you give. I don't know how much you earn. This is your private uh, thing. I don't know how much you pray uh, when you stood up and went somewhere because you love God, because you want to do His will, His uh, fulfill His task. I don't know. But if this leftover from all of that is uh, nothing. There was uh, once a story about a lawyer who got, uh, gets to heaven and uh, in front of the gate there is uh, Peter with uh, Archangel Michael and uh, this uh, lawyer wants to get in heaven and they ask, what have you done good in your life? And I would like to rem remind to you that we are not talking about salvation. We are not talking about God's love. We are not talking about God's blessing. We talk about his heart, which is um, uh, draw, uh, drawn towards you. And, uh, we are talking, what have we done? We have received this precious uh, grace and mercy, this generosity and love, forgiveness, participation, support. God is saying, I will be with you till the end of the world. Uh, so what do we do with it? So both uh, those gatekeepers uh, say to the lawyer, what have you done? And he's thinking and thinking and then he remembers. I remember I was a young lawyer and once I uh, gave an offering, I um, 25 cents uh, gave to some homeless person and they angels look through the list and they see, yeah, it's done. But Peter says, no, it's not enough. And then the lawyer is thinking and thinking and thinking and then remembers, there is another situation. There was also a situation we had um, a very sentimental story for somebody. Uh, somebody told me a sentimental story and I also gave them 25 cents. And they look through the books and see, yeah, it was. And then they are thinking, what to do? And then Peter, Peter is whispering to Mikhail, let's give him back those 50 cents so that he can go to hell. Let's return those uh, small things to him. 
Can it be that uh, all this um, result, you will be standing in the line, there will be Peter standing, also missionaries, people who have given up all this life, uh, everything here for the sake of God, also um, some royalties and noble people who gave away their properties to protect people and they risked their titles, they gave away their titles for the sake of Christ. And then we would come to this altar and we would expect the, uh, God saying that you are such a great Christian, you are such a great Christian. And I will finish with uh, Matthew 6. Do not uh, lay for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Play up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. So, invest your treasures in heaven. All of us have some riches. And verse 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. All of us have some treasures. Maybe you are a pensioner, senior, receive uh, the minimal pension and uh, you barely live through months and you are afraid of autumn and all these uh, money and all these costs you read in mass media, but uh, you, st you still have your treasure. What is your precious thing? What is it? Where is it? If it's in bank, if it's at home, if it's hidden somewhere, from already 1930s, some gold or silver money or crystal, crystal ways you know, which has lost their value. You think it might cost uh, a lot of money, but uh, this is only a couple of tens of euros. So each of us have our precious, uh, our treasure. And where is our treasure? Our heart is. So where is your treasure? Is also your heart. And Jesus advises us uh, with eternal and really wise advice, uh, advice inspired by God fa the Father. He's saying that uh, lay up your treasures in heaven, that you look for opportunities to do something according to God's mission and task. When God, I can serve you, give me this opportunity, I will do it. I will do it with the right heart attitude. I will do it from all of my heart. I will do it from A to Z. God, I want to do something. I want my heart to be there. I want all my riches to be there. So the big question is not how little you have here, but the big question is where is more, there or here? If here you have a lot, then you have to take care that over there is even more. If here is a little, then you know. You know that you can be a person who has over there a huge, a huge uh, riches and a lot. My dear brother and sister, today is the Sunday of uh, Holy Communion. And it was the last time when Jesus was together with his disciples. And he took the bread and he says, this is my body which is broken for you. I gave it for you. Here is my body broken for you. Take it and remember what I have done for you. And then he took the cup and said, this cup is the blood of New Testament, my blood, and I'm pouring them for you. Just imagine that uh, you need to reply to what he is saying. And first you say, yes, thank you, God, I am not worthy. I can just uh, come with reverence and uh, trembling of my heart and I can accept it. Glory to you, uh, thanksgiving to you. But then the same question. Peter, do you love me? And how your love is um, showed? Do you love me more than those others? Peter, and um, 
when God Bez speaks galim. to you, how Bez would you, how would you respond to this generous love I'm offering you? And then Peter starts looking into his pockets and... And then he has something. Five cents, though they come from me. My life, uh, I have one million, and from this million I give five cents to you. Fifteen cents, fifty, uh, fifty cents. How much? How much of the life that you live is Christ's life? He gave all his life for you. Would this, uh, these last days, this uh, last days of the church, is time when we are as uh, those uh, Christians, Western Christians, who are wealthy and uh, well eaten and so on? For a couple of times with Liga, we were able to visit uh, those uh, rich countries in the West, and the evening comes, and they have a beautiful uh, picture. Uh, church and those cemetery and you're walking uh, around this cemetery and you you think that uh, somebody is uh, coming and cleaning and clearing everything up everything seems so good and fresh flowers everywhere and in the evening you go to the cafe and uh, a lot of elderly people and uh, everybody's drinking wine people are talking and uh, having uh, uh, cracking jokes and also talking and we were thinking oh this is Heaven. But maybe for them, it's heaven is already here and they will not have the real heaven. If you go to the church, and uh, beautiful church, uh, high quality organ, and very good uh, ventilation, and also conditioning and historic uh, paintings from the first or second century, and also the wooden floor and everything is perfect. Those who are professionals in arts and history, they can have such a satisfaction. And then uh, also maybe this is a mem memorial service and somebody has died and, and they sit there and and listen to pastor speaking and then they will return to their cafe and speak and live their well arranged life. We are moving actually with very, very fast steps towards it. We become very egocentric. Uh, we slowly start count and say what God has to do instead of uh, reflecting what I can do for God. And I must say that maybe how our family was. Uh, remember I said that we started our ministry without any ambition that God who has to pay something. And for tens of years people were supporting us uh, the second uh, part of uh, the month and for us to be able to live. And we understood and we believed that this is God's work and that He is helping us. And this is normal. So would we who start in spirit uh, would lose it? Uh, we would become a very, very ordinary people who are motivated only by money. And I refuse to be like that. Our family refused to be like that. I'm not going to start counting, I'm not going to boast, but we want to live for God, we want to live for God, we want to bring something to Him, so that He can say, you know, Vilnius, I want to reward you, I want to bless you, and this morning I'm speaking to you, my dear brother or sister, there is no answer for Latvia. There is none political party that would uh, bring order to Latvia. There is not a president or prime minister who would save your neighbor, your relative, your family. And if you and me, we are weak, uh, the ones who are just taking care of money, then those people around us would perish. 
simply perish, because you and me, we are the salt of the world and light of the world right at the moment. We are the ones who save people from hell, and there is no other. And therefore, when this morning you are having this establishment of Lord Jesus, please do some inventorization in your soul. Please don't uh, accept uh, this as uh, uh, blaming you and that you are somehow um, being... Uh, put down like that um, you don't you have done but um, just understand that this is the time when there is not much time left and we are praying for God to send people in his uh, field and this is the way how he is uh, commission you and to send you to your mission